नमस्ते वेलकम टू द थर्ड सेशन ऑन मॉड्यूल फोर दिस सेशन इज अबाउट हार्डवेयर सॉफ्टवेयर को डिज़ाइन एंड प्रोग्राम मॉडलिंग सो हियर फंडामेंटल इश्यूज इन हार्डवेयर सॉफ्टवेयर को डिज़ाइन वी आर गोइंग टू सी इनिशियली देन द कंप्यूटेशनल मॉडल्स लाइक डेटा फ्लो मॉडल देन कंट्रोल्ड डेटा फ्लो मॉडल स्टेट मशीन मॉडल सीक्वेंशियल प्रोग्राम मॉडल कंकरेंट प्रोसेस मॉडल एंड ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड मॉडल दिस मॉडल्स वी आर गोइंग टू सी विद एग्जांपल्स फर्स्ट टॉपिक अंडर हार्डवेयर सॉफ्टवेयर को डिजाइन एंड प्रोग्रामिंग मॉडल In the traditional embedded system development approach, the hardware software partitioning is done at any early stage, and engineers from the software group take care of the software architecture development and implementation. Whereas engineers from the hardware group are responsible for building the hardware requirement of the product. See, there is less interaction between the two teams, and the development happens either serially or parallel. Once the hardware and software are ready, the integration is performed. <coughs> uh, in the previous session, <coughs> while discussing about uh, uh, non-functional attributes of embedded system. Uh, we have come across one time uh, one uh, issue that is a uh, time to market under non functional attributes time to market is one of the issue that we have discussed where we see that uh, the embedded product from the conceptualization it has to reach the market as early as possible so that uh the competitor will not uh, copy or uh, have the same kind of a product and uh, take the benefit out of that so time to market is one of the concept so uh, unless going for hardware and software development together this time to market may not be addressed properly so the increasing competition in the commercial market and need for or the reducing of time to market the product calls for a novel approach for the embedded system design in which the hardware and software are co developed developed together instead of independently developing the both <coughs> first the fundamental issues in uh, hardware software co design the hardware software co design is a problem statement and when we try to solve this problem statement in real life we may come across multiple issues in the design the following section illustrate some of the fundamental issues in hardware software co design the first thing is selecting a model second thing is selecting the architecture third point is selecting the language and fourth point is partitioning system requirements into hardware and software selecting a model what is mean by model model are used for capturing and describing the system characteristics the characteristics see models are used for describing the system characteristics then what is architecture see the model only captures the system characteristics and it does not to provide information on how the system can be manufactured so what is architecture architecture specifies how a system is going to be implemented uh, in terms of say the number of types of different components and the interconnections among them you can say a design is given over here so model it specifies the characteristics describes the system characteristics and architecture specifies how a system is going to be implemented then selecting a language for implementing the firmware and finally partitioning the system requirements into hardware and software so which comes under the hardware design and which section comes under the which are the things coming under the software uh, design are partitioned over uh, over here so four main uh, fundamental issues in hardware software co design first one we will see now uh, selecting a model as i said 
models are used for capturing and describing the system characteristics a model what is a model it is a formal system consisting of objects and composition rules objects and composition rules forms the model uh, it is uh, hard to make a decision on which model should be followed in a particular system design several models are available uh, in uh, for software uh, hardware software co-design the first model uh, uh, is data flow graph dfg we call the second model is controlled data flow graph that is cdfg third one is a state machine model a, a sm uh, state machine uh, finite state machine we, we call fsm and uh, fourth one is a sequential program model fifth one is a concurrent process model and sixth one is object oriented model so six important uh, different computational models are available which describe the system characteristics so it will be very much difficult for the designer to decide on which model he or she should follow so that the system will be designed. So what happens is most often designers switch between the varieties of models from the requirement specification to the implementation aspect of the system design. The reason being the objective varies in each and every phase. For example, at the specification stage only the functionality of the system is in focus and not the implementation information. When the design moves to the implementation aspect, the information about the system component is revealed and the designer has to switch to a model capable of capturing the system's structure. So it is common that uh, designers will switch between the variety of models from the requirement specification to the implementation aspect of the system. The second part is selecting the architecture. So as I said already model captures the system characteristics and model does not provide information on how the system can be manufactured. So there comes the architecture which specifies how a system is going to be implemented in terms of number and types of the different components and interconnection among them. So some of the architectures are listed over here. Uh, let me go through that one. First one is the control architecture uh, then data path architecture complex instruction set computing architecture reduced instruction set computing architecture very long inst uh, instruction word computing single instruction multiple data multiple instruction multiple data etc are the commonly used architectures in the system design so some of them whatever we have listed now fall into application specific architecture for example controller architecture while some other fall into general purpose architecture like CISC or RISC and some other fall into parallel processing architecture the parallel processing class like VLI W that is uh, a very long instruction word computing and SIMD stands for single instruction multiple data and MIMD stands for multiple instruction multiple data. Now we will see uh, all these architectures in detail. First one is a controller architecture. This implements the finite state machine model FSM using a state register and two combinational circuits. <coughs> the state register holds the present state and the combinational circuit implement the logic for the next state of the output. Present state and next state details will be there in the state register and the combinational circuit will be the event which will be triggering from one state to the next state. Next is the data path architecture uh, is best suited for implementing the data flow graph model where the output is generated as a result of a set of predefined computations on a input data. A data path represents a channel between the input and output and in data path architecture the data path may contain registers, counters, register file, memories and ports along with high speed arithmetic units. Ports connect the data path to multiple buses. 
नेक्स्ट वन इज द फाइनेट स्टेट मशीन डेटा पाथ आर्किटेक्चर दिस कंबाइन द कंट्रोलर आर्किटेक्चर विद द डेटा पाथ आर्किटेक्चर इट इज ए कांबिनेशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट टू कंट्रोल आर्किटेक्चर एज वेल एज डेटा पाथ आर्किटेक्चर इट इंप्लीमेंट्स ए कंट्रोलर विद डेटा पाथ द कंट्रोलर जनरेट्स द कंट्रोल इनपुट वेर एज डेटा पाथ प्रोसेस द डेटा The data path contains two types of I/O ports. Uh, one of which uh, uh, acts as the control port for receiving uh, or sending the control signals from or to to the controller unit, and the second I/O port interfaces the data path with the external world for data input and output. The next uh, architecture is the complex instruction set computing (CISC) architecture. Uses an instruction set representing the complex operations. It is possible for CISC instruction set to uh, perform a large complex op operation with a single instruction. Complexity lies in the software. Uh, the use of uh, a single complex instruction in place of multiple simple instructions generally reduces the program memory access and program memory size requirement however it requires additional silicon for implementing the microcode decoder for decoding the cisc instruction decoding structure will be complex in the case of cisc architecture the data path for cisc processor is complex <laughs> The next one is reduced instruction set computing. RAC architecture reuses the instruction set representing simple operations, and it requires the execution of multiple RAC instructions to perform a complex operation. The data path of RAC architecture contains a large register file for. storing the operands and output the risc instruction set is designed to operate on registers risc architecture supports extensive pipelining next one is uh, a very long instruction word computing vliw architecture this implements multiple functions functional units like alus multipliers etc in the data path the vliw instruction packages one standard instruction for fun functional unit of the data path parallel processing architecture uh next uh, is the single instruction multiple data multiple instruction multiple data these two come under the parallel processing architecture so let us see what is meant by parallel processing architecture see parallel processing architecture implements multiple concurrent processing elements processing elements in simple it is a pe implements multiple concurrent processing elements and each processing element may associate with a data path containing register and local memory so first single instruction multiple data simd and multiple instruction multiple data mimd architectures are examples for parallel a uh, processing architecture in simd architecture a single instruction is executed in parallel with the help of a processing element the scheduling of the single instruction execution and controlling of the programming or processing element pe is performed through a single controller the simd architecture forms the basis of reconfigurable processor coming to the mimd architecture the mimd architecture execute different instructions at a given point of time the mimd architecture forms the basis for microprocessor systems <coughs> so here uh, we have discussed about uh, selecting the model and selecting the architecture the third point is uh, selecting a language a programming language captures the computational model and maps it into the architecture 
there is no hard and fast rule to specify which language should be used for capturing a model. <coughs> a model can be captured using multiple programming languages like C or C++ or C Sharp or Java etc. for software implementation and languages like VHDL stands for Very High Speed Integrated Circuit Hardware Description Language or System C, Verilog etc. for hardware implementations. On the other hand, a single language can be used for capturing a variety of models. Certain programmers are now the certain uh, certain languages are good in capturing uh, certain um, computational model for example c++ is a good candidate for capturing object oriented model the only prerequisite in selecting a programming language for capturing a model is that the language should capture the model easily <coughs> the last part over here it is um, a partitioning system requirement into hardware as well as software. It may be possible to implement the system requirements in either hardware or software. Software in embedded system we call it as firmware. It is a tough decision making task to figure out which one to opt. Various uh, hardware software trade offs are used for making a decision on hardware software partitioning. So this is all about the fundamental issues in uh, hardware, software, co-design, four aspects over here, uh, selecting the model, selecting the architecture, selecting the language and finally partitioning the system requirements into hardware and software. Now I said some, I have given some uh, uh, models, model names while discussing the selecting a model topic over here so six different models i have named now we will see all of these computational models used in the embedded systems in detail so computational models in embedded systems so six different models are used mainly so the first one is a data flow graph or a diagram we call it as a DFG model. Second one is control data flow graph or diagram. We call it as a CDFG model. Third one is state machine model, FSM, finite state machine model. Fourth one is a sequential program model. Fifth one is concurrent or it is also called as a communicating process model. And sixth one is object oriented model. First data flow graph or diagram DFG model. See, uh, DFG model translates the data processing requirements into a data flow graph. The data flow graph model is a data driven model in which the program execution is determined by data. The model emphasizes on the data and operations on the uh, data transform <coughs> the input data to the output data. Data flow graph is a visual model in which operation on the data is nothing but called as a process. The process or operation on a data is represented using a block that is a circle and data flow is represented by arrows. You can just look into this particular diagram given over here. So the data flow node is represented over here there which is uh, given with a plus symbol right and um, another data flow node is given uh, which is uh, a minus symbol encircled over there this uh, represents a process that is addition is a process here or subtraction is a process here as per the graph given over there so operation on the data is called as a process and process is represented by using a circle in the data flow graph and the data flow is represented by arrows. You can see the data A or data B or data C are given to the process over here. So the process is represented by a circle and the data flow is represented by arrows. An inward arrow to the process represents the input data and an outward arrow from the process that is a circle represents the output data in the DFG notation. Embedded applications which are uh, uh, computational, intensive, uh, 
and data driven are modeled using the DFG model. So to a simple example, let us take a simple example of computational requirement to say x is equal to a plus b and y is equal to x minus c and how this will be illustrated by using the DFG model is explained in this particular figure. So there is a process the plus and another process minus right and the, the plus process we have the two data inputs a and b the arrow is represented that one and for the process minus we have the data x as well as c and output is y and x output as well as y output are represented in the dfg in the dfg model the data path is the data flow path from the input to the output a dfg model is said to be acyclic dfg that is adfg if it doesn't contain multiple values for the input variable and multiple output values for a given set of inputs the second one is control data flow graph let us see how the control data flow graph is different to the data flow graph in a data flow model the execution is controlled by data and it is doesn't involve any control operation you can find in the previous example only plus and minus were the processes or data flow nodes nodes present but coming to the control data flow graph it is used for modeling applications involving conditional program execution conditional program execution uh, is highlighted over here it could be emphasized with the con uh, control data flow graph cdfg models contain both data operations and control operations data operations and control operations both are represented in uh, controlled data flow graph model as shown in this particular figure once again you can find the processes are represented by the circles over here and the control or the condition is represented by a diamond block a rhombus you can see in the figure over there the controlled data flow graph uses the data flow graph as element and conditional conditions as the de decision makers cdfg contains both data flow nodes and decision nodes as given in the figure there but uh, when you compare with the data flow there uh, data flow graph contains only the data flow nodes not the condition or decision making nodes uh, take an example if a flag is equal to 1 then x is equal to a plus b and else y is equal to a minus b this requirement contains a decision making process let us see how this will be implemented in the <coughs> Uh, control data flow graph model so look into the figure given over here flag is equal to 1 a control node is created if it is true then uh, we have the data flow node which will give uh, a plus b operation and if flag is not equal to 1 if this is false if flag is equal to 1 condition is, or control is false then the simple uh, a uh, minus b operation will be done next is the state machine model finest state machine model the state machine model is used for modeling reactive or event driven embedded system whose processing behavior is dependent on the state transitions embedded systems used in the control and industrial applications are typical examples for event driven systems <coughs> the state machine model describes the system behavior with state event action and transitions the system behavior will be explained by four one is the state second one is the event third one is the action and fourth one is the transition let us see what are these state is a representation of a current situation event is an input to the state the event acts, acts as a stimuli for the state transition and transition is the movement from one state to the another state and action is an activity to be performed by the state machine finite state machine we call simply as the fsm model uh, 
is one in which the number of states are finite as an example let us consider the design of an embedded system for driver passenger seat belt warning in an automate you using the fsm model the system requirements are given here when the vehicle ignition is turned on and the seat belt is not fastened within 10 seconds of the ignition on the system generates an alarm signal for 5 seconds the alarm is turned off when the alarm time the 5 seconds expires or if the driver or passenger fasten the belt or if the ignition switch is turned off whichever happens first so by looking into the requirement of seat belt warning uh, we can construct a finite state machine as given over here in this particular figure in the figure you can find the states are LRAM of waiting and LRAM on three different states you can find one is LRAM off second one is waiting and third one is LRAM on so for this uh, states events are also there which are the events if you ask the first event can be ignition key on next ignition key off timer expire then alarm time expire and seat belt on one two three four and five five different events are possible for the three states as per the requirement of the example given so let us try to understand this particular fsm model for automatic seat belt warning uh, system See, alarm is off initially. So, this is the first state, alarm is off. If the ignition key is on, an event occurs. If the ignition key is on, then, then waiting state will be there. Because as per the requirement of the uh, seat belt warning uh, system, the alarm is turned off when the alarm time is expires or when the vehicle ignition is turned on and the seat belt is not fastened within the 10 seconds that means after ignition is on the alarm should wait for 10 seconds that 10 seconds waiting state is given over here in the waiting state in the diagram so alarm is off ignition key is on so the system enters into the waiting and 10 seconds will be counted over here so during this 10 seconds of waiting period if ignition key is off or seat belt is fastened by the driver or passenger then no need of giving the alarm signal so go back to the original uh, state that is alarm off so in the waiting state if 10 seconds are passed and ignition key is on and seat belt is not fastened by the driver or passenger then timer is expired and alarm will be on the third state uh, system will enter into the third state alarm on in the alarm on state we have another event that is alarm time offer alarm should be there for 5 seconds and after 5 seconds it will be off once it is off then alarm off state uh, will be reached on the other hand within this 5 seconds during the alarm if the seat belt is fastened by the uh, driver or passenger or if the ignition key is off once again the alarm will be off and we will reach the initial state alarm off from alarm on stage so here LRAM off, waiting and LRAM on are the three states as well as ignition key on, ignition key off, seat belt on, timer expire, then LRAM time expire, all these are the events. So this can be represented with the three states in FSM, one is the idle state, second one is the ready state and third one is the running state idle ready and running as shown in this particular diagram <coughs> see the method of writing the fsm finance state meeting machine the states are there three states you can find idle ready as well as running during idle state an event happens that is load timer event happens and uh, the system will enter the ready state 
right in a ready state once again an event happens that is the start time or action the start time event uh, occurs and the system will enter the running state in the running state once again another event happens that is the stop timer or timer expires and the system enter into the idle state so for the state change from one state to another an event should happen and action will be performed for example for idle state the event happened is the load timer and action performed is timer count is equal to new count and reach the ready state in the ready state event is start timer and action is decrement the counter it will have to wait for the 10 seconds to decrement the counter and state reach is running once the counter is decremented to and reach zero in the running state we have the event stop timer if at all the seat belt is fastened or the ignition key is off or timer expires that is for the 5 seconds alarm will be there if the timer expires also event has been occurred and the action is set the time out flag or the time out interrupt and reach the initial stage one example we will see now regarding uh, design an automatic uh, tea or coffee vending machine based on a finite state machine model for the requirement given over here the requirement is the tea or coffee vending is initiated by user inserting 5 rupee coin after inserting the coin the user can either select coffee or tea or press cancel to cancel the order and take back the coin so fsm representation for this particular requirement is given in the figure here so look into the figure carefully you can find four states here state a state b state c and state d state a is wait for coin this is the initial state of the uh, automatic tea or coffee vending machine so it will be ready for the uh, user so once the user comes and insert the coin then it has to go go to the state b so in state b it is wait for the user input so once the user insert the coin for coffee or tea then event is insert coin so action is okay it will reach the state b and in state b once again it is waiting for the user to input because user can choice either coffee or tea so depending upon the user's choice either coffee or tea event can happen for example if t button is pressed then state c will be reached and if uh, uh, coffee button is pressed then state d will be reached so appropriate actions that is uh, uh, dispense of tea or dispense of a coffee a coffee will be done either in state c or state d so state c is a dispense of uh, tea and state d stands for dispense of coffee so here in state c and d once the tea or coffee is dispensed the action is done and the original state of the vending machine that is state a will be reached so this is a simple finite state machine for uh, for automatic tea or coffee vending machine so let us look into another example uh, design a coin operated public telephone unit based on fsm model for the following requirements the calling process is initiated by lifting the receiver off hook for the telephone unit after lifting the phone the user needs to insert a 1 rupee coin <coughs> to make the call if the line is busy the coin is returned on placing the receiver back on the hook that is on hook if the line is through the user is allowed to talk till 60 seconds and at the end of 45th second the prompt for inserting another 1 rupee coin is for continuing the call is initiated if the user doesn't insert another one rupee coin the call is terminated on computing the 60 seconds time slot so look into the diagram the finite state machine diagram given over here you can find several states here 
स्टेट ए बी सी डी ई एफ जी हेच एंड आई सो लेट एस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर फाइनेट स्टेट मशीन मॉडल फॉर कॉइन ऑपरेटेड टेलीफोन सिस्टम फर्स्ट स्टेट ए दिस इज वॉट इज दिस स्टेट स्टेट ए इज रेडी स्टेट दैट इज द टेलीफोन बूथ और टेलीफोन इज ऑन हुक एंड इट इज वेटिंग फॉर द यूजर दैट इज रेडी स्टेट सो वॉट इज द इवेंट द यूजर कम्स एंड लिफ्ट द receiver this is the event if this event is done that is action is okay then the uh, uh, coin operated telephone system system will enter into the state b what is state b state b is waiting for the coin the user has lifted the receiver now the user need to insert the coin <coughs> so state b is wait for the coin so what is the event after state b it is the coin insert by the user if the coin is inserted by the user then system will reach state c so state c coin is inserted now the user has to dial the number so wait for the number so state c is waiting for the number see the user may enter a correct number a valid number or user may enter a Uh, invalid number so from state c depending upon the event that is valid number or invalid number we can reach state d or state h respectively so state d stands for uh, dialing if it is a valid number the user dialing and if it is in not a valid number we will reach state h and state h uh, stands for invalid number input and from invalid number input the user has to place the receiver on hook so it will reach state a <coughs> on the other hand from state c if the user entered a valid number we will the system will enter into state d which is nothing but dialing state so after dialing um the line may be connected properly for the user or line may be fault or it may be busy accordingly two states will be possible or two events will be generated one is line fault or line busy which will reach into state g and once line busy occurs then the user will have to place the receiver on hook so it will be connected back to state a on the other hand if from state d which stands for dialing uh, if the line is available then the user or the system will enter into the state e state e stands for call in progress the call will be for the 60 seconds and till the time out happens the um, uh, the system will be in state e only and once the time out happens then system will reach the state f after state f the system will uh, the user will have to cradle the receiver that means the receiver has to be on hook and so it will be uh, connected back to uh, given back to state a reaching the state a this is about uh, the fsm model for coin operated telephone system Uh, most of the time uh, uh, state machine model translates the requirement into sequential driven program and it is difficult to implement concurrent processing with the fsm this limitation is addressed by hierarchical or concurrent uh, finite state machine model hierarchical or concurrent state machine model is used to uh, avoid the difficulty of implementing the concurrent processing with the finite state machine uh, the hierarchical concurrent finite state machine hcfsm is an extension of fsm for supporting concurrency and hierarchy fcf hcf sm extends the conventional state diagram by and or decomposition of states together with inter level trans transitions and a broadcast mechanism for communicating between concurrent processes hc fsm uses state charts for capturing the state transitions events and actions the hull state charts uml state diagram etc are example 
uh, for popular state charts used for HCFSA modeling of embedded systems. Next, we will see the sequential program model. In a sequential programming model, the functions or processing requirements are executed in sequence. It is the same as the conventional procedural programming. Here, the program instructions are iterated and executed conditionally and the data gets transformed through a series of operations. Finite state machines are good choice for sequential program modeling. Another important tool used for modeling sequential program is flowcharts. The FSM approach represents the states, events, transitions and actions whereas flowchart model is the execution flow. The execution of functions in a sequential program model for the seat belt warning system can be illustrated in this particular flowchart given in the diagram. <coughs> First uh, ignition key on, next uh, wait for 10 seconds and still if the ignition is on then check whether seat belt is fastened that is the seat belt is on. If the seat belt is fastened then it is end of the flowchart. There is no need of alarming system. If the seat belt is not fastened, that is, seat belt on is false, no, then uh, set the timer for 5 seconds start alarm. <coughs> During the 5 seconds, check whether the ignition is on or seat belt is on. Whether the ignition is on or seat belt is fastened, check during the 5 seconds of alarm. <coughs> If ignition is off or if seat belt is fastened, then stop alarm. Otherwise, uh, wait or continue the alarm till time 5 seconds is expired. If it is expired, stop alarm and if it is not expired, keep checking whether the ignition is on or seat belt is fastened. So this is the program sequential program model for a seat belt warning system. Accordingly, the functions used are you have defined on off with the zero and one and zero. Yes, no. Once again, one and zero. Then a seat belt warn a function is defined here. Then another function to wait for ten seconds. Then check ignition key whether it is on or not. If the seat belt is fastened or not set the timer for 5 second start the alarm after the timer uh, with a while loop you can uh, implement this one uh, in the while loop condition check seat belt equal to off that means check seat, if a seat belt is not fastened and check the ignition key off if the uh, ignition key is in the off condition and timer should also consider timer should be on for 5 seconds at the end stop the LRAM or stop the yeah stop the LRAM that's it next is about the concurrent uh, communicating process model the concurrent or the communicating process model models concurrently executing task or process it is easier to implement certain uh, requirements in concurrent processing model than the conventional sequential execution as you can see in the flowchart or the relevant uh, coding you can find the sequential execution is time consuming so how we can avoid that one in a concurrent process model that we will see sequential execution leads to a single sequential execution of the task and thereby leads to poor process utilization when the task involves io waiting sleeping for specified duration etc if the task is split into multiple subtask it is possible to tackle the CPU usage effectively when the subtask under execution goes to a wait or sleep mode by switching the task execution. However, concurrent processing model requires additional overheads in the task scheduling, task synchronization and communication. Take the same example for concurrent processing model. Um, how we can implement the seat belt warning system in a concurrent processing model. Uh, we can split the 
task into following five heads the first is wait timer task that is the timer task for waiting 10 seconds second one may be ignition key status monitoring task task for checking the ignition key status third one may be seat belt status uh, monitoring task uh, here check a uh, uh, task for checking the seat belt uh, status fourth one may be alarm control task task for starting and stopping of the alarm and fifth one last task may be alarm timer task alarm timer task for waiting five seconds so fee these five tasks uh, can be uh, can be implemented over here the first one is wait timer task so it is waiting for 10 seconds the second one is ignition uh, key status monitor so here ignition key on whether we are checking whether the ignition key is on in the third one ignition um, seat belt status monitor you can find whether the seat belt is on that means whether the seat belt is fastened or not and fourth one is alarm task alarm timer task this is the alarm timer for five seconds alarm should be on for five seconds that is implemented in this particular task and fifth one is alarm control task that is uh, <coughs> uh, wait for the timer and uh, uh, run the alarm and once the timer is expired then stop the alarm so these are the five different uh, tasks that is uh, implemented over here and while executing this one the user should be very careful the one way of executing this one is uh, this uh, task is uh, given over here in this particular uh, block of um, for the seat belt warning system is illustrated in this particular block wait timer expire first um, timer expire should happen then ignition on ignition off seat belt on seat belt off alarm timer stop and alarm timer expire these are the um, events that should happen so for that one in order we need to start the alarm only after the expiration of 10 seconds wait a timer and that too only if the seat belt is off and ignition key is on hence the alarm control task is executed only when the wait timer is expired and if the ignition key is on state and the seat belt in the off state so the following sequence can be followed first create the task wait timer then create the task ignition key status monitor then create the task seat belt status monitor then create the task alarm control and finally create the task alarm timer so first the wait timer what this will do the uh, as soon as the ignition key is on the timer will be uh, set for 10 seconds after 10 seconds ignition key status monitor still if the ignition key is on and next is the seat belt status monitor and the passenger or driver has not fastened the belt then alarm control uh, task will be initiated here uh, the alarm will be uh, created for 5 seconds LROM will be generated for 5 seconds will be given for 5 seconds and once again LROM uh, timer will be uh, monitored here so that within the 5 second verify whether the key status is on as well as the seat belt is on if at all both are on then LROM will continue for sorry seat belt is key is on and seat belt is off if at all this is satisfied then LDRAM timer will continue for 5 seconds and after 5 seconds it will be off so this is a concurrent uh, or communicating process model so next one the last one is the object uh, oriented model the object oriented model is an uh, object based model for modeling system requirements it uh, disseminates a complex software requirement into simple well defined pieces called objects object oriented model brings reusability maintainability and productivity in the system design in the object oriented modeling object is an entity used for representing or modeling a particular piece of the system 
each object is characterized by a set of unique behavior and state a class is an abstract description of a set of objects and it can be considered as blueprint of an object a class represents the state of the object through number a class represents the state of object through member variables and object behavior through member functions uh, member variables will be defining the uh, state of an object and the member functions will be defining the behavior of an object the member variables and member functions of the class can be private public or protected a private member variables and functions are accessible only within the class whereas public variables and functions are accessible within the class as well as outside the class the protected variables and functions are protected from external access however classes driven from a parent class can also access the protected member functions and variables the concept of object and class brings abstraction hiding and data protection so this is all in this particular uh, uh, session uh, next session will be embedded firmware design and development we will see later before concluding this particular session uh, we will uh, go through the important uh, questions that could be asked uh, what is hardware software co-design explain the fundamental issues in hardware software co-design next explain the differences between SIMD MIMD VL IW architecture <coughs> what is the computational model explain its role in hardware software co-design what is the difference between data flow graph and control data flow graph model explain their significance in embedded system design what is state and state machine explain the role of state machine in embedded system design explain sequential program model with an example explain the concurrent or communication process model explain its role in the real-time system design and one more could be explain the object oriented model for embedded system design so other than these questions uh, as I have already discussed some examples regarding state machine model that is FSM model for automatic seat belt warning system is an important question also FSM model for automatic tea or coffee vending machine is another uh, important question and FSM model for coin operated telephone system is another important question also the sequential under sequential programming model the same uh, uh, what is that coin operated telephone system uh, is or seat belt warning system seat belt warning system is uh, implemented that is also an important question also regarding the uh, seat belt warning machine uh, we have discussed in uh, a concurrent or communicating process model so you can uh, get a good question uh, regarding seat belt warning machine example can be discussed under FSM model it can be discussed under sequential program model or it could also be discussed under uh, concurrent or communicating process model that's it here thank you